So next in my review of media outlets that were wrong and pushing a lie for two years to try to take down Donald Trump is CNN and the entire cast. And here we have Cuomo and Don Lemon that are going to be having a little discussion. It's only five minutes, but I want to go through it to show just how absurd they are. Are there any mea culpas? Are there any, oh, I'm sorry, we were wrong about this thing for the entire two years? Are there any apologies for not being journalists and instead just being voices and an extension of the Democratic Party and the establishment, including the intel community? No, they're not going to be any of them. So I think it's worth going through and seeing this little debate for them. They're a couple of characters, to say the least. So let's go. Considering uh, how much this president does not tell the truth. But that doesn't mean you thought the Mueller report was going to take him down. I've said it. You said it. And I said it. I'm very tough on this president. But I have said... Look, if you think at the end of the day this president's going to be let out of the White House in handcuffs in an orange jumpsuit, then you're sadly mistaken. And I can't tell you how many people would say that to me all the time. This is really going to get him. And I would say, mm, I don't think so. If you want him out, you got to vote him out. So here we have an admission from Don Lemon and Cuomo is going to agree that they knew. Now they're going to have us believe. Oh, we knew that Mueller would never find anything. We knew that there wasn't going to be any charges ever leveled against them. He's never going to be taken out anywhere in handcuffs and the people connected to him. What a load of crap. They've been spreading like he's a criminal, and they'll even allude to the fact that maybe he's criminal, maybe he's a Putin, a, pu a puppet of Putin later, they'll say in this little exchange they have. This is just garbage. What they're then saying is, well, we just want investigations so that we could use our platforms and 95% of the mainstream media and academia and the entertainment industry and Silicon Valley so we could smear Trump. It doesn't matter if he committed crimes or not. We don't expect him to ever be held accountable for any crimes. We just want to be able to smear him and then hopefully lie enough to the American people and get out there and vote against him. That's what they're saying here. This is garbage. They all, People on CNN and all over the place, they were constantly giving the narrative, Mueller's going to get him, Mueller's going to have significant indictments. Now they're trying to be like, well, we knew Trump would never be touched. Absolute garbage. That's not what they were leading off with every day in their show before the Mueller indictment, was it? It was all Mueller's the great hope. The walls are closing in. The noose is tightening. Now it's, oh, we knew nothing would ever come of it. What a joke. Well, that's exactly right. Where you get anybody that you don't like what they did is at the ballot box. The idea of finding criminality to me has always been remote. Look, it could still be found. There are a lot of investigations going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I just didn't see the proof of it then, and I haven't seen enough of the record to see it now. But I'll tell Okay, so what they're saying was, well, just, I agree with this. If you don't like Trump, then vote him out. But that doesn't mean that we need to have these narratives of he might be a stooge of Russia on and on and on and on and fake investigations that were started by opposition research paid for by Hillary Clinton and have Obama weaponize his intel agency to spy on Trump. That's garbage. There's plenty of stuff you could say about Trump's policies and disagree. I say stuff that I disagree with him all the time. I don't like the fact that he's debt spending like he is. I didn't like the fact that he bombed Syria. You know, other such things. But instead, the Democrats led by people in the mainstream media like CNN, like these two jokers, They've constantly pushed this Russia collusion narrative that was a lie. And again, they're not apologizing for it. I'll tell you why I did this. I'm not an I told you so guy. You know this. We've known each other a long time. And uh, I put better minds around me for a reason. But look, Rudy Giuliani, I've known most of my life. OK, we've had plenty of nasty back and forths. Uh, we try to disagree with decency. He demanded an apology no. from me tonight. <laughs> for asking uh, tough questions? Look, I mean, and I'm, I meant what I said. There ain't no damn apology coming. I got nothing to apologize for. I believe in everything that I've done, and I'm going to do it every bit as much as I can going forward when I think it's right. You got to confront power. That's the job. So there you have it. There's not going to be an apology. <laughs> Tom Lemon chuckles. We didn't do anything wrong. I mean, we just lied about this president. We pretend to be journalists and we just attack him and spread this lie for two years that he was a stooge of Putin. I mean, we did that. What do we have to apologize for? For pretending to be journalists and to whip up fake tears when there's things that we think, you know, we'll constantly say that Trump's like the next Hitler or he's an authoritarian or he's a stooge of Putin. And we lie to people every day about <laughs> what do we have to apologize for? I, there ain't going to be no damn apology. We know. We know. And that's why the, eventually the mainstream media will die. Because the American people are going to start to realize, oh, you're just unabashedly lying to us. You're engaged in conspiracy theories with no facts or evidence to back them up. And then when you've found out that what you've been telling us has been wrong for two years, you get indignant at even the idea that someone would ask you for an apology. I assume you're not going to apologize to the Covington kids as well that you two enjoyed in smearing and covering up for the fact that black adult racists were yelling at them. Of course not. What apology is necessary? They could lie. They could smear. They could libel people. 
They could, tr you know, remember, these two think Russian interference is such a big deal. And we know, because they constantly talk about this, that the intel community said more than that Russia was trying to push forth a particular candidate, such as Donald Trump. They were always, they were doing what they always do, which is try to sow division in our country. So these two morons that have spread this lie for two years and have substantial amounts of people in this country thinking that Trump, without any evidence whatsoever, is a Russian agent, that's created more division than Russia could have ever hoped for through someone like Carter Page or George Top Papadopoulos or anything like that, or hacking emails. So, but of course, they're not going to apologize for doing the very thing that they say that Russia is trying to do, which is interfere and create division in our country. They constantly talk about division Trump's creating, but when it turns out, oops, sorry, we were wrong in our assessment for two years talking about Trump-Russia collusion. Now, there ain't going to be no damn apology. But that's where we're living. Yeah. They're taking a victory lap for not being felons. That's how low the standard is <laughs> for behavior right now. Now, no, the low standard is the standard of the media that spread a conspiracy theory that said that they had evidence of Russia collusion and that they had evidence that there were criminality engaged in the Russia uh, and Trump's team with Russians and stealing the 2016 election, and it was all a lie. The victory lap is, we told you for two years that there was no criminal conspiracy between anybody in the Trump campaign and Russia. Trump said that repeatedly, and he was called a liar, and he was mocked, and he was said, the walls are closing in, the noose is tightening, new bombshell today, Trump and his people, his family is going to be let out in handcuffs. That's what we heard the narrative over and over from places like CNN and from people like these two. That's what the victory lap's about. We were right all along. These people are saying, you shouldn't be, oh, oh, it's shameful that they're taking a victory lap over this just because they're not criminals. No, they're taking a victory lap because everything they, they said was right. They said that people like you and the media were spreading lies to hurt Trump, that you weren't real journalists, that you weren't looking at the facts, that you were making stuff up because you just are hashtag resistance. You're a mouthpiece for the establishment Democratic Party and their intel agency allies. That's what you are. He says, well, you got to speak truth to power. What a joke. Speak truth to power. This is the same agency, CNN, that's been telling us to even criticize the intel agencies is destroying America. It's the same group that said, Chris Cuomo here, who said, uh, remember, it's illegal for you to look at the WikiLeaks dumps. You have to come to agencies like us to be able to see them. Yeah, that's the guy that's going to tell us about speaking truth to power. That's going to do everything they can to protect the intel agencies and the establishment Democrats to the point where they're even saying for you to look at information that was released about them showing wrongdoing is illegal and you have to get it filtered through CNN. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Say, well, this was a witch hunt. We were set up. It's not true, Don. Yeah. The American people have to know that it's not true. Just because somebody is not found guilty of a crime doesn't mean it was wrong to ask the questions in the first place. Yeah. Okay, well then based on that knowledge, then we should be having an investigation. I'm assuming they have no problem with having all sorts of special counsels to investigate the FBI actions, Obama administration actions, and using things like opposition research to spy on Trump. The dossier that they use that we now know is still unverified to this day. After two years of Robert Mueller's near limitless investigation with unlimited resources, he still hasn't been able to verify the accusations within it. That's why he said there was no Russia collusion. So now the stance is, well, hey, you know, it doesn't hurt to have an investigation just because it came up not guilty. So then I assume they will agree that if Trump pays for opposition research that shows all the Democrats are Chinese spies, he's now allowed to weaponize his intel agency to spy on them, leak things to the press, unmask people, wiretap them, all that sort of thing. Because it doesn't hurt to ask questions. That doesn't mean it's a witch hunt. And the same voice they'll tell you in their shows. Oh, can you believe Trump's now? He's going to try to weaponize this and start investigations into the, the intel community and the, Obama. That's terrible. That's a terrible thing to do. And then the same breath they'll tell you. Oh, what's it harmed? What's the harm in having investigations? They're not witch hunts. We're just getting to the truth, even if people are found innocent. And it doesn't say that. Listen, it, it, and um, I, I said this last night. It doesn't say that there was no evidence. It says that That's right. they did not. Right? I, what, what's the exact language? The exact language is um, didn't constitute a crime. Yeah. And I didn't say it didn't constitute a crime. It says yeah. They, that they, it, they say it, that it did not establish. That's what it says. It says it. Yeah. Did I mean, not they use establish. different verbs. They, right. Yeah. That's what that means. There wasn't enough evidence for a crime. Period. That means they're innocent. That's how our system works. By the same token, I didn't hear them saying after the Hillary investigation by Comey, which we're now going finding out, which I've known all along, was a sham. I don't remember them saying, well, you know, it wasn't that there wasn't evidence that she broke the law. You know, Comey was just saying no prosecution. They said she was innocent. She was exonerated. That's what they said about that. 
It's ridiculous. They use constitute, they use establish. What they don't say is collusion, because collusion is a behavior, not a crime. The distinction matters in legal analysis. Yeah. I don't like that people conflate them because it winds up giving a misimpression of what people mean, like me, when I... Yes, that's exactly what you and your organization have done for two years now. We know that there was no crime such as collusion, but you repeated it over and over and over and over and over again, to which people were led to believe that there was somehow some crime. So you were able to say things. This is a common trick. You see this used a lot by uh, people, uh, semantic tricks, in order to try to win an argument. So what they're doing is they'll substitute the words collusion for being somehow, they'll imply it means something criminal or something incredibly shady or not ethical. But then here they'll say, oh, no, we never meant that it was anything criminal. So every week when they're saying the walls are closing in, the noose is tightening, Trump might not vision his term, there was collusion with Russia. Now they're having you say, oh no, we didn't mean there was anything criminal going on. And that type of language is what convinced so many people that there was something criminal went on and went a long way to getting an investigation into whether or not there was criminality. So now what are they saying? So like collusion, they mean what? The act of talking with people in foreign powers? So, like, any time Trump, like, Don Jr. met Russians in Trump Tower, that was collusion. But now they're saying, well, we're not saying that's a crime. Collusion's not a crime. Well, then why weren't you leading every day with, look, all these other channels or all these other shows that are saying Don Jr. colluding with this Russian was a crime? No, that's not a crime whatsoever. They didn't say that. They pretended like it was a big crime and that Trump Jr. was going to be arrested. That's what they said. Now they're saying, oh, no, we didn't mean that it was a crime, collusion. It's really clear what Mueller said. No one conspired in a legal fashion from Trump's team with Russian government people to affect the 2016 election, period. That's what it says. So I don't want to have this semantic game. You were wrong. I say, was there collusion? Yes. Was it criminal? Not that I've seen. Yeah. And that so if we're going to talk about collusion, why isn't Chris Cuomo talking about the collusion that we saw, for example, from Hillary Clinton with Russians? Hillary Clinton with a uh, former British spy. She colluded with them to get information they paid for from Kremlin agents that was then used to cause more division. The dossier caused more division, caused investigations into a duly elected president. It all turned out to be false. It was sourced by Kremlin agents. So basically we have a bunch of people who were to believe that's where Steele got this information. A bunch of Kremlin-connected agents that are like, hey, you want to really mess with the U.S. government? Here's what we'll do. We'll say that someone running for president's uh, working with us in, in illegalities. And then people like Como and Lemon here and the intel agencies and Hillary and Academia Entertainment, etc. They all ran with that story, did exactly what the Kremlin wanted, and created this division. He's clearly not concerned. Why all this focus on the collusion? You know, we, we, we hear all these talks that Trump people were connected to Russians. They had these talks with Russians. But we don't hear anything about Hillary's team's connection with Russians. Some of them the very same people. It was bad for Don Jr. to meet with this Russian vessel Nitskaya in Trump Tower. But the fact that she was in, a, she had hired Fusion GPS and was working with them, the same agency Hillary hired, and met with Glenn Simpson, the leader of G Fusion GPS, the day before and the day after the Trump Tower meeting. No, co no comments on that by Lemon and Cuomo. No comments by all the people that the Podesta group, the Russians that they were engaged with working with. Some of the same ones that Manafort was. Some of these Russian oligarchs, Vekelsberg, for example, is one of them that there were connections. Supposedly they gave money to Trump or they worked with Manafort before, but we also know they had connections to Hillary's campaign, etc. This is such garbage. They want to act like anytime Trump people had any contact with Russians whatsoever, that that's, that's kind of evidence that something shady was going on, but they ignore any time any other official had contacts with sometimes the very same Russians. It's just, they're full of it. That's held true so far. So all of that, listen, we don't know. This is Barr's assessment. But even beyond that, let's just say it comes out and Barr was off on his assessment or whatever. It is still very tough to remove a sitting president. We know what the DOJ guidelines say. And by the time all of this would unfold, the election will have come around anyways. Mm -hmm. And if you really feel that strongly about getting rid of this president, go to the polls. That's what, that's what I've been... So now, because their efforts at criminalizing Trump have failed, and they're part of spreading that lie, they're basically begging people, please, don't hold us accountable for that lie. Go vote Trump out because he's a terrible person. That's what they've resorted to. Yeah, we get it, Don. 
Elections matter. It was you people. Remember, you warned, oh, maybe Trump won't accept the results of the election if he loses. It's you people that haven't accepted the results. You've pushed conspiracy theories and lies on the behalf of the intel agencies. You've brought in people like Brennan to work at your network, former CIA head, to spread these lies that Trump was colluding and Trump people com committed crimes and there'd be indictments against Trump's family. And you let them get away with it. You didn't challenge it. You spread this. Both of you did. You're not journalists. You're not unbiased. You're acting as just agents for the establishment Democratic Party and the intel agencies. And now after it's been blown up in your face, instead of apologizing and admitting that you're dupes, whether it be unwittingly or wittingly, which we know the answer, it's wittingly. Instead, you just act like, oh no, we knew that there would never be criminal charges, uh, but you need to go out there and vote. Yeah, good luck. Because what you two did, Stan, like, don't get me wrong, I support Trump and I want him to win in 2020. But you see real Democrat people such as Jimmy Dore and Aaron Maté and Matt Tiavi and Glenn Greenwald that are out there saying, thanks a lot, you people that push this Russia conspiracy theory like CNN that only gave one side of the story that didn't leave anyone come on to counter this narrative. Thanks a lot, because now that they, it's blown up in their face, it's the best re-election tool Trump will have. So now I see you're happy to be groveling for voters to go vote him out. It's saying, but... Again, it doesn't mean that the president should not be investigated. It doesn't mean people around him should not be investigated. It doesn't mean that this was a witch hunt. This was not a witch hunt. If it was a witch hunt, look at all the witches who got caught. There was certain... That's garbage. It was started based on opposition. This is what I said would be the case from the get-go. We knew that it started under false pretenses, things like using opposition research or the other claim, the, the Steele dossier, that we now know was not verified at the time and still, after years of investigation, is still not verified. Basically, Hillary Clinton paid for a document sourced by Kremlin officials of a bunch of dirt on Trump that were all lies, yet that was used by the FBI to spy on people connected to Trump to see if they tried to collude with Russians to get dirt on Hillary. You can't even make this stuff up. It's so ridiculous. But nonetheless, we know that dossier, that was one of the impetus. That's one of the reasons the media started going nuts on this story. The P allegations. Carter Page was a Russian spy. Cohen met in Prague to discuss how to steal the election with Russians, etc. All a lie. All still unverified to this day. You know, but that was what the media, that's one of the starts of the intel investigation. And then the other start was what? George Papadopoulos got drunk and talked to a Hillary Clinton donor and said, one time I met this Russian, it says he has emails that are shady about Hillary. That's the other reason for the start of this investigation. Police. The same people that'll cry if there's any investigations into the Obama administration for these abuses. It's not a witch hunt. And then they say, well, people got arrested for process crimes. Again, I said this is what would happen. The argument was that once the FBI and the intel agencies got caught with their pants down and Trump won, and once they realized, uh-oh, it's now coming out how shady things like the dossier were, what they would do is try to get anyone from any crime whatsoever. That's why we saw them looking at crimes from 10 years ago and why they're only doing these process crimes of lying to the FBI. Because they needed to be able to do exactly what Don Lemon's doing today. This is exactly what I said would happen. They would ignore that it was all started under crappy pretenses. They would ignore that they lied to the American people about this idea of people connecting to Trump and Trump himself colluding with Russians, conspiring with them to affect the election. They would ignore that all that was a lie and say, well, we got this guy for lying, so it was all worth it. Look at all the witches that have been burned, says Don Lemon. So I guess that means that uh, we could start an investigation into Hillary over Uranium One and then go back as far as we want and subpoena everyone connected to her entirely in her life. And if we find any of them lie even once to Congress, even if the entire original allegations of Hillary is a lie and Trump just weaponized his intel agencies, well, it doesn't matter because it burns some witches. Absolute joke. This is what they're cheering for our system to be now. Only a big number of people who got caught and entities and a whole lot of people who lied to investigators about their contacts with Russia. Why? Rudy Giuliani has a lot of good arguments. One of them is not his argument on that. Why did they lie? Because people lie, <laughs> he said. Look, and a lot of these lies are exaggerated. For example, Flynn lied to the FBI. That's what Manafort said. But we know that before, or I'm sorry, that's what Mueller said. We know for a fact that the FBI agents before the Mueller investigation started said they did not think Flynn lied to them. In reality, what happened was Mueller threatened to go after Flynn's son, so Flynn pled guilty to lying to the FBI to get his son off the hook. Cohen supposedly lied to Congress, what, because he mixed up some dates? And then you have, what, Papadopoulos lied? Because he messed up, he forgot some emails or something, and he didn't tell them exactly what his drunken conversation with Downer was? There's so, yeah, it's stupid to lie. I get it. 
But there's all sorts of reasons that they might lie. For example, they know that anything they say would be leaked to the press and that it would be spun as, oh, they must be Russian agents, which we'll get to in a second with some of the more they say. But nonetheless, why are they only focused on these lies? And we know for a fact, for example, Mills and Aberdeen both lie. Well, let's run a little. <laughs> yeah, people lie <laughs> when they have something to hide. Right. So let's take that at face value. We know that Mills and Aberdeen lied. We know from FBI t uh, texts that were released that, or messages that were released that both Mills and Aberdeen, Hillary's lawyers, told the FBI that they had no knowledge of Hillary's server until after she was done at Secretary of State. But we also know from leaked emails from Mills and Aberdeen that that's not true. They knew as early as 2009, well before and during when Hillary was Secretary of State, that she had this private server. So that was a lie. But they weren't charged. Now, according to Como and Lemon, they should be focused on that because they had they must have lied for a reason. They had something to hide. But Lemon and Como are not concerned with that whatsoever. We know from released texts of FBI agents that they said they thought that it defined credulity that Hillary Clinton thought that the C at the top of papers meant alphabetical order and not classified. What they mean by defined credulity is she lied. So if Hillary lied about that, and she lied and said all the emails were about yoga, we know that she lied about that. Why aren't they saying, oh, she lied to cover something up? They don't care about that. Right? So we constantly see, we know that people like Brennan and Clapper and Comey all lied in front of Congress. They must have lied to cover something up. So wouldn't they want an investigation into why people like Comey were lying? But no, they don't want that. They say that's terrible. It would be like a witch hunt for Trump to do that. So this argument's just ridiculous. And speaking of lying, we know that these two jokers and their entire network lied for two years. So what are they covering up based on their own logic? That's what they do, yeah. you know, because the last thing you want to do to anybody in law enforcement is lie. I know you can lie to cops. It's not a crime. You can't lie to feds. You don't want to lie to anybody asking you any questions like that if you have nothing to hide. Yeah. Look, he knows that there was trouble. He's also the man's attorney and he's trying to help him. What I don't get, Don, I really don't get it. If this president has nothing to hide, he should want us to at least see his written answers. His Did they say that about Obama and the birth certificate? He, If he has nothing to hide, then just at least release the long form birth certificate. Did they say that about Eric Holder when Obama had to claim executive privilege to not see his emails regarding Fast and Furious? If Eric Holder wants us to believe him, he should at least release these emails and Obama shouldn't use executive privilege to keep them and on and on and on. Did we ever get to see Hillary's testimony from the FBI and her? Did she release her own transcript of what she said or the FBI do it? No, they didn't. On and on and on and on and on. It's only with Trump. Oh, Trump should have to release his step. He should have to release his written answers. It's such, it's so one-sided. It's ridiculous. And the problem is the average CNN viewer, they're just taking this stuff. I don't blame them. They're taking this stuff at face value though. And they don't realize the ridiculous double standard. That's all I've asked in this whole investigation. That's fine. If you're going to apply the law to one side, the letter of the law, and apply it to Trump's side and start charging people for things like lying to the FBI or failing to register as a foreign lobbyist, great, fine. As long as you apply it to everyone else. And constantly, they don't. They let the people connected to Hillary away from it. What's well, the same way with our media? If you're going to sit there with a straight face and say, this wasn't a witch hunt, the allegations were serious, so they needed to be investigated, then you don't get to say, oh, and Trump's wrong to call for an investigation into the Obama administration and the FBI for using things like the dossier to start this investigation. You don't get to say when people connected to Trump lie that it must prove that there was something incredibly shady going on, but ignore when people connected to Hillary or the intel agencies lie. You don't get to say that Trump, it, it, he must be guilty or something if he doesn't release his written answers. But it's no problem when other people want to do closed door testimony that are connected to Hillary of the Intel community and not release their answers. It's ridiculous. And it's transparent for anyone who's really following just how scummy these people are. They're not journalists. They're not unbiased. They're literally just mouthpieces for the Intel community and the establishment Democrat Party. Doc, his lawyers already but doctored there's a way that he can fix all of this. Because the concern, I think, for most people is that it, is he compromised by a foreign entity, whether it's Russia or, or anyone else? And the easy fix is to show your tax returns. And if Unbelievable. One, why is this a concern about Trump? Was it a concern about Obama? When Obama was shipping pallets of cash to Iran, was Don Lemon saying, there's a concern that he's under the thumb of the Iranian regime? No, they thought Obama was a really cool, great guy, and he had great reasons to do that. Now, they constantly to spread this narrative in this slide. Again, they won't have anyone on the left, like people like uh, Glenn, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Glenn Greenwald or Matt Tiabi. They won't have any of them on the show. And they won't have anyone on the right to, 
to dispute them. But they constantly spute this false narrative that like, all oh, Trump's cozying up to Russia. When in reality, a cursory look will show you Trump's been more hostile to Russia, probably as a result of all this propaganda and this witch hunt against him, than Obama was. And basically more than anyone ex going back to Reagan was. He's doing all kinds of things antagonistic towards Russia. So why the worry if, wh what is it that, oh, well, maybe he's a Russian stooge or a stooge of some other country. Why? And then he says the tax return. See, this is, I've said this all along. This is why Trump won't release the tax return. Don Lemon says right here, you know, if he'd release the tax return, you know, and it shows he doesn't have business relations with other countries, then he'd be okay. Do you realize how stupid this is? This is, in a nutshell, exactly what the problem is in the first place. This is why they fell for and spread the lie of Russia collusion. Because they take something that isn't proof of anything and say that's proof of something nefarious. So according to them, if a billionaire international businessman who won the presidency has on his tax returns that he's ever had businesses in like Russia or China or something, that's it. That's proof. He's under the thumb of Putin or Jing or, who, or Xi or whoever. It's so ridiculous. Yes. And Trump's not going to release the tax returns because he knows people like these will say, go through with the fine tooth comb. Be like, what's up with this? What's up with this business relationship with this person in Denmark? He must be under the thumb of the people of Denmark. Oh, what's this? He had a business relation in the UK? He must be under the thumb of the UK, etc., etc. They don't do this with anyone else. They didn't do it with Obama or Clinton. Hillary's Secretary of State, while Bill Clinton's speaking and, and during the Uranium One scandal, while Bill Clinton's off speaking with Vladimir Putin personally, two weeks later getting half a million dollars in his pocket from a Russian state-owned bank. Not a word from Don Lemon or Cuomo on that. Not a word from all the pay-for-play allegations of foreign nationals giving the Clinton Foundation money and then getting meetings with Hillary. Not a word of that. They don't care about any of that. But if Trump ever did business in Russia, well, that's it. That proves it. Just release your tax returns. What the hell would that prove? Nothing. That's how insane these people are. They just go from one lie to the next. Now we're back to tax returns again. And I don't blame point. It, you know, I would, I'm someone who's a fan of transparency. I want to see as much material as possible. But I don't blame Trump for not releasing his tax returns. 95% of our cultural institutions of power take everything he does. Heck, he even eats two scoops of ice cream, and that's somehow a problem. So, of course, they're admitting to you right here. Yeah, you know, if he had a relation, if his tax return so he has a business relationship in Russia, then, you know, we're worried that he's an agent of Putin. It's so ridiculous. You know, if I look into Don Lemon's finances, for example, and I find out that anyone that's ever done anything and ethical has been involved in any sort of business relationship or donating him money or him donating them money, etc. Does that prove that Don Lemon's a criminal and is under the thumb of that person? Of course not. That's just reserved for Donald Trump. So what's the implication? We can never have a president that's had any relationship with a foreign power ever, particularly a business relationship, where there's concerns they're under the thumb of them, even if they're making expressed overtures to go against that country like Trump has with Russia? It's Don Lemon and Chris Cuomo talking about all the relationships of Dianne Feinstein employing a Russian spy for over 10 years and then having a bunch of favorable decisions for China? Are they checking into Dianne Feinstein's finances to make sure she doesn't have business relationships in Russia or China? Of course not. It's just reserved for Trump. More garbage double standards. More non sequiturs and conspiracy theories. And they won't admit that they were wrong about the lie that they pushed for two years. If you, they're not, if you don't own anything in Russia, you're not doing any business with Russia or China or anybody. I don't that even know would, that the, I don't that know that the taxes helps. would. If you're not doing business with anybody, you could be under the thumb of any country if you're doing business with any of them. So what, would that be another special counsel we release? Oh, uh, look at this. Trump bought some ice cream trucks in China. Better have another special counsel or let's go through Trump's finances for the past 20 years. That could show, he had a business relation in China. He must be under, he could be under the thumb of the Chinese. The reason when he says people are worried about this, that he could be an agent of Russia or China or any other country, is because of people like them. And remember, Cuomo and Lemon both agree that, oh, the Russians were trying to sow discord in our country. And then with the straight face, they're saying, oh, and if the tax returns show that he had a business in another country, we have legitimate fears that he's a stooge of that country. It, it's so stupid. And then Como's going to say, even if he released the tax return, that's not enough to satiate my concerns. Satis was satisfy on the question. It would help. It'd be transparent. Yeah. You know, that, that'd it's be a good happen. thing if you got nothing to hide. I don't think they're dispositive on the issue, but I do think that... And we're back to this, right? Here's the party of the left. The same party that was saying, you know... 
uh, that supposedly was against the Patriot Act, but apparently not. Of course, the establishment people never were. Now we're back to, if you got nothing to hide, then show everything in your life. It's so ridiculous. It's so Orwellian. Well, clearly the fact that Trump doesn't release his personal information, knowing full well that we're going to say no matter what it says, it proves that he's colluding with some foreign nation. The fact that he won't do that and set him up for that proves that he's a liar. If he releases it, then he's a stooge of Russia. If he doesn't release it, then he's a stooge of Russia. If he, if, he's, if he has nothing to hide, he would just be totally open. Says two people that would never practice what they preach. They won't open all of their finances or all their personal emails. If they got nothing to hide, let's see all their emails. Let's see everything they've done, right? At, you know, they said, Does he, do you have a legal right? You know the law. Look, Sekolo and Rudy are better lawyers than I ever was on my best day. What I'm saying is... That. Don Lemon is a scumbag, by the way. At least Cuomo will... Como understands the idea of when you're trying to make an argument and convince people of something that you want to be a little self-depreciating. Well, that guy's smarter than me in this way. Don Lemon, I don't know about that, and puts his head down. He just seethes with hatred for anyone connected to Trump. He's a charlatan. He's a race huckster that wants to say that if you have concerns about illegal immigration, then you must be a racist. He's constantly bringing up a racial card, calling Trump a racist with no evidence. Constantly sowing division, saying, pitching wild conspiracy theories about Russia collusion that were a lie. He's a scumbag. Cuomo sucks, but Lemon's worse by, uh, you know, several degrees. It's not about the legal right. It's about the duty to the public. There's only one president in this country. You have a duty to the people who put you in power to speak the truth to them on the matters that are of importance to them. Yeah. And the idea. So what's the matter that's of importance? The tax return? Why? Because you said so? There were a lot of people that wanted to see Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate. I wasn't a birth or anything. But was their argument... Mr. Obama, you have the obligation to speak truth to the people and the issues that concern them. You must release your long-form birth certificate. No, it was actually the exact opposite. They said that he has his right to privacy, which they're right about, and they called people conspiracy theorists that were pushing it. Now they take the exact opposite turn, though, right? Oh, he has to release all this information. Hear that you're going to hide your answers? I don't buy it. Yeah. And to say, well, he's got to protect himself... I don't buy that. You put yourself in a different position when you put yourself in a position of public trust. To be, uh, yeah, and to be the president. You know another agency that's in a position of public trust? The media. And they tell you that all the time, right? Particularly CNN. When Acosta gets picked out of a kicked out of a press poll for basically being a buffoon, CNN led the charge of saying, this is Orwellian. The press is the only thing that stands between, you know, telling the people the truth of what's going on. We speak truth to power. And they're right, that was the original idea of the press. They pat themselves on the back, they give themselves awards, they talk about how great they are, how without them, democracy would die, and how important their institution is. They're right about all that. That's in theory what's right anyways. And then they fail short of that every single day, as this little clip's showing you. They're not independent, they're not journalists. They're liars. They're an arm of the democratic establishment in the intel community. They're not speaking truth to power. They're trying to silence the people that want truth, saying to even criticize the intel agencies or to look into them hurts the country. That's the opposite of speaking truth to power. That is operating as a propaganda tool on the behalf of power to silence truth. That's why CNN won't have anyone that counters this narrative, even a left-wing person on the show. So for them to get up and say, well, Trump, because of his, he's in a position of public trust, he has to be fully transparent. Yet they won't do so. They're complete liars. They're also in a position of public trust, and they failed miserably. Much worse than you could say Trump ever did. United States, look, I'm glad you arrested, um, you arrested up because get ready, you're going to be the scapegoat. We're going to be the scapegoats. The media, the mainstream media, the boogeyman. Let's get after it. Yeah. And there you have it. They're, they're the victims. Oh, we didn't do anything wrong, but now we're the boogeyman. Yeah, you are. You suck. You lied to the American people. You sowed division. You took part in rather intentionally. I'm not saying they should criminally be charged, but they basically helped what was it amounts to a coup where a Barack Obama's administration, his intel agency, sought to stop Trump from getting elected and then stopped to stymie a duly elected president by spying on him, using research that they never had verified that was paid for by Trump's opponent. And there's tons of other issues that we can go into, which I've done in my other videos. You participated in that. You're everything that people have been claiming. You're liars. You push fake news. You're not real journalists. You don't speak truth to power. You don't investigate things. You don't have people with counter opinions on your show. 
You just push conspiracy theories. You push what people like John Brennan, the former head of the CIA, wants you to push. You push what the establishment Democrats want you to push. People like Hillary Clinton. You're not journalists. You deserve to be mocked and deserve to be ridiculed. And the fact that Don Lemon acts like this and Cuomo say, bring it on, or whatever, shows they have no self-awareness. They wear it as a badge of honor. We lied to the people for two years, and now when we're called out about it, we're proud to be called out. That must show we're good people. They truly believe that. They're scumbags. They're terrible at their job. They're liars. And they have such a high and mighty opinion of themselves because they live in a bubble. That's why the people need to start. And, you know, I don't know what CNN's so proud of. Their ratings are collapsing. But that's all right. Their hubris will be their downfall. You know, I hope they lose that Smollett case. I hope they do get sued but for $250 million. I hope that, or I'm not Smollett, uh, the Covington kid case. I hope he wins that. They have nothing to apologize for. Oh, yeah, we're the bad guys. We're the scapegoats. You know, just because we spread a lie for two years. Instead, it's like, what arrogance does it take? What lack of self-awareness does it take to say, we peddled this garbage for two years, and now when it turns out that we kept saying, Mueller's going to bring the goods, Mueller's going to bring the goods. And then when he doesn't, the day after that, our first show, instead of saying, eh, okay, we were wrong, we're sorry. Instead of even saying that, they say, oh, and people are going to say we're bad for somehow messing up the story. Here we go. We're the victims. It's unbelievable. These people are never going to change. These are the people that are considered credible journalists. These are the people that are all the Trump haters are saying, well, did you see what CNN said? It's, it's unbelievable. So it's up to us to be able to, you know, I'm not saying crap on the people that watch CNN. You know, the average person, if you don't have time to look into all of this as much as me or maybe some of you watching this video do, you might think, well, geez, everyone in academia says Trump's a Russian agent. And everyone in the entertainment industry says it. And everyone in Silicon Valley says it. And, you know, they're shadow banning or just upright censoring voices that are speaking up against that. And now everyone in the media is telling me this. So, yeah, it sounds reasonable. So it's hard to, don't attack those people for thinking that, but you need to show them just how scummy and terrible these people are. They can't even muster after the lies they've been told come available, two years worth of lies, they can't even have any sort of self-awareness. Instead, now it just totally turns to, oh, we're the, we're the victims now. How dare people criticize us? How dare they? Yeah, and it's just ridiculous, so... I'll be putting more videos out in the near future, so look for them. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I also have a PayPal page that I'm going to be linking. Um, if you can't get money, it's no problem whatsoever. Any money I get will be used to upgrade equipment, uh, try to get some editing software, and try to be able to put more material out and more professional material. So I would really appreciate that. But yeah, like and subscribe. Recommend me some other people. And uh, thanks for watching, and have a good one.